Okay. So, um, and it's a good thing you called me, you reached out to me. Okay. That's a good, good habit. <laughs> when I say that, I mean, I, I tell people this all the time. Don't do anything without checking with me first. Oh, okay, John Wayne, I will. And then they call me up. Hey, I just bought this thing for 10 grand. Should I have done that? No. <laughs> Why didn't you ask me first? Well, you know, it just sounded so good. It's like, yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm talking to my children. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I I remember that. I remember last time I, I see I had meetings with you before uh, last year. Uh, me and my daughter when I was when I first uh, was getting started. And I know you were saying about uh, you know subcontractors going to work and then they not getting paid and they you know they kind of crack down on doing stuff like that and you know it just so happened this is my first time around doing subcontracting with this this uh um uh, who was that uh that uh, her I'm down in Key West, and man, it's like I'm still waiting on I'm still waiting on the paycheck. Right, right. And, so, I, and I keep getting these excuses out, the excuses out, the excuses. Well, this is what you can do about it. There's a couple of options you can take. Um, the first option is to, you know, negotiate with the 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 supplier, the with the prime contractor. Um. There's, there's several ways you can go about that. I mean, they're saying, you know, if it's been months since you've been paid and, and you deserve to be paid, you can go to the prime and say, look, I need to get paid. If I don't get paid, I'm going to the government accountability office, the GAO, and I'm going to register a complaint and uh, they're going to do an investigation. So I hope you don't have an 8A or a hub zone that you're trying to keep because <laughs> If they do an audit and find out you're cheating, you're going to lose your 8A, you're going to lose your hub zone, you could be kicked off your GSA schedule. So why don't you just pay me and let's be done with this? That's right. that's your first option is just try and bring the hammer down and threaten them with, because if they're doing, if they're not paying you, more than likely they're not paying other vendors and they're doing all kinds of shady stuff and hoping they don't get caught. So the last thing they want is the GAO up their key, sir, or to be audited on their 8A or their, their hub zone or their, their GSA, you know, I mean, no one wants to get audited. Right. Even if you're, even if leg legitimate, you're not doing anything wrong. You still don't want to get audited. Oh yeah. Definitely. I had one guy tell me that, uh, he was audited because of a similar situation like this where a subcontractor, he had a, a disagreement with a subcontractor and they told him it wasn't good. The auditor showed up. And he said the auditor literally told all of his employees to go home and stayed there for like four days going through everything. And he's like, we couldn't do business, literally could not do business for four days. And this auditor wow. was like, I need food. Bring me, bring me something to drink. It was a real jerk about it, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so no yeah, one. He, he wasn't leaving that spot. Yeah. Yeah. No one wants to be audited, you know? So. That's your first step is to just, like I said, bring the hammer down, threaten them with, with yeah, everything. Uh, the second option, if that doesn't work, is to actually go to the GAO and, and register a complaint. Uh, go to the purchasing officer that they're working for and register a complaint. You know, just stir the pot. <clears throat> if they're not going not gonna to do anything about it, then you actually have to take action. Your third option, okay. unfortunately, if option A and B doesn't work, is to hire an attorney and sue them. Um, a lot of attorneys, like we have a local attorney, attorney here, uh, John Morgan. I'm John Morgan of Morgan of Morgan of Morgan. They have so many commercials, it's crazy. One of their commercials advertises um, not being paid by prime contractors. Uh, and and uh, you know, a lot of attorneys will take it on as a... If they don't get your money, you don't pay them, but they're going to not only get your money, but they're going to sue the prime for the money that it cost them to sue the prime. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're not losing anything in that case. And what's that? Who is that again? Well, John it's, Morgan in Florida, uh, it's John Morgan, but you you're in Florida, right? No, I'm in Chicago now, um, but I was in Florida. The work you're not getting paid on was from the keys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, and see, I, I came. I I came to Chicago for the holidays, you know, visit, you know, with my family, 
which I was expecting to get my paycheck by the end. So I've been here for two weeks. My tr- my truck is still stuck down there, and I haven't I haven't I can't even book my flight to go back down there to get my truck. Right. That's how bad it is. Well, I can I can tell you this. I rarely see this case in the federal arena. I see this kind of case in the state and local and in uh, county government all the time. Um, but it's 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 harder to do this kind of thing as a prime and get away with it in the federal system. It's I would say it's not easier, but maybe, maybe it is easier, and that's why more people do it. On I get people all the time saying, "I'm not doing state contracts anymore. I never get paid." Right. I got a uh, I got a client who called me one day and he's and he was actually the prime. This isn't a situation where the prime wasn't paying him as a sub. He was the prime, but the state canceled the contract halfway through it. And he's like, "Well, you you can't oh. do that." And they're like, "Yeah, we can. It's it's in the agreement that you signed when we gave you the contract that we can cancel it at any time." And he's like, "Well, you guys had me buy ten thousand freaking smoke detectors." And you've only bought about 4,000 of them. I'm, now I'm sitting on 6,000 smoke detectors. What am I supposed to do with these? And the state's like, well, we're sorry, but we ran out of money. And uh, we couldn't buy them from you if we had to. So we have to cancel the contract. You're going to have to sell those to somebody else. You know, and that, he, was a state. that was a state contract. And he's like, well, oh. you know, now I'm giving smoke detectors to everybody. Christmas, birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> anniversary <laughs> <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving wow. yeah and, it has to be at this point <laughs> well you know, I mean, it's not funny that the guy's stuck with him and, and losing the money but he was able to laugh at it and and you know the funny part that yeah. brought this whole conversation up is that i was on the live training one day and he was talking and in the background if you don't change your battery in your smoke detector every so so many years it'll start beeping and it beeps every like 30 right. seconds. And I, I hear the smoke right. detector beeping. And uh, I told him, I said, you know, you should change your battery in your smoke detector. And he's like, that's what that is? And this is the same guy that has 6,000 smoke detectors. <laughs> and that, that brought up a whole other story. Back in college, I used to own an event company and I DJed and, and ran uh, events. And I was doing an event for um, – a, 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 not a sheriff's department, a um, fire department. And I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention? Uh, uh, can I have your attention, please? They were kind of loud. So I asked the chief first, but I, I walked over and I removed a smoke detector and I walked back up to the microphone and I pushed the button and set it off. And you want to talk about wow. people's heads turning immediately because <laughs> they're all firemen? <laughs> Right, uh, so you got everybody to sit there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Hey, you know, it sucks you're not getting paid, and it puts people in a bad position, but at least you're still, you know, keeping a good head about it. I would start by contact them and say, look, this this has gone on too long. This is ridiculous. You know, net 30 is one thing, but it's three months. You haven't paid me. I have to take action. I don't have a choice. I need this money to pay my bills. You know, um, I've seen situations like this where it could put people out of business. You know, uh, I had a client who she didn't register with Wide Area Workflow, which is also called IRAP now. And she did a big contract to government and invoiced them. And they w- couldn't pay her because she wasn't set up with IRAP. Well, once you're once you're, the government owes you money, it's harder to set up in that system because they already owe you money. It's easier to do it when they don't owe you money. Long story short, she called me and said, John Wayne, if you can't help me with this and I can't get paid, government owes me $280,000. I can't get this done and get paid. I can't make payroll. It's going to put me out of business. So it, you know, it's really no laughing matter on many levels. But like I said, I would start with the, the prime and just threaten them. To one end to the other, you don't have a choice. I, I have to come after you, and, and if I do, uh, I'm not playing. I'm going to go to the GAO. I'm going to go to the purchasing agent that, that you that hired you. Well, how are you going to find out who that is? I work with John Wayne. He can find out anything about anything government. Right. So you yeah. give me you you give me the yeah. details on the contract. I will find out who the purchasing agent is and give you their name and number and email. And if they don't believe you, yeah, and that's. That's where we go. That's next. what I was trying to do. Uh, actually, uh, MCM was was uh, I think was the main 
person and the guy that has a contract, his name is, I believe his name was Robin. And the, the sad part about it is that, um, is that, uh, you know, the contract stated that they can hold back like two weeks, which they, they held back for two weeks. And when I called, uh, first of all, we was promised, we was promised 10 to 12 loads a day. We only got maybe, maybe the most we got is five and we only worked one week and then they, they kind of kicked us out. You know, they kicked us out and they lied and said that they dropped a new crew in front of us and this and that and this. It was just, a, it was, everything about it was just, you know, just bogus. Gotcha. You know, the guy, the, the, the guy wouldn't load us. Like, I got video of him loading my trailer that he would stop and get off his, uh, he would get off his tractor and go to talking to somebody for like 20 whole minutes while I'm sitting there getting loaded and then he'll jump off his machine and tell me he got a meeting to go to have such and such to finish loading. Like it just was all unprofessional. Wasting your time. Yeah. More than likely yeah. if he's doing this to you, he's doing it to more than just you. So I would start by threatening him and see if he can just get paid. I mean, that's number one. If he's going to just, you know, uh, if he's doing this and then the people who he's getting away with, that's sliding, but the ones that, that are not getting away with that, you know, are threatening to report them, he's paying those guys. Go ahead and try and get paid first. If you can't get paid, right. uh, I'd go ahead and reach out to Morgan and Morgan second because they I, I know I've seen a commercial that they specialize in helping subcontractors get paid. Okay. You say Morgan and Morgan. Yep. It's on the screen right now. Eight 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 seven one five eighty one ninety. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know what? I want to talk to you again too. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Jed. I was trying to write that number down. You just took it away. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Morgan and Morgan. Uh, um. So I wanted to get back into. I, I'm I'm trying to uh, do the uh, what's that? Nine six zero oh, oh, five eight five, four. Eight. So uh, what I was trying to do is, um, uh, me, you know, me and my girlfriend, we started back, you know, doing this and uh, trying to do the um, uh, 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 simplified acquisitions. Um, right. And we put in for for a bid for this contract that was out in Texas, and uh, we lost uh, we lost a, a bid, and I um, uh, and I was trying to figure out why. Um. um so what happened was I called the uh, per the, uh, uh, the uh, person of contact uh, um, from off the solicitation, right? And she, and she was telling me that you know well well she took the lowest uh, the lowest bid, which I I'm sure that we probably bid a little high on that because it's being a small business. I think you can't go over uh, what is it, like two hundred thousand or something like that. And and we was we was well over two hundred thousand, but we just we just you know put our ten percent in with the vendor that we was gonna have to do the actual work, you know, and we sent it to be it like that. So, uh, I, I mean, I want to really, I'm trying to really get back into doing uh, this, and I I want to continue, I want to uh, continue on doing it with you. Um, well, let's Don't let's have much start. Money now. Yeah, let's start with getting okay. you paid first. Let's take care of that. That's that's uh, you know number one issue we need to resolve. So, um, start with following up with the prime, and uh, just threaten them. You know, it's all you can do. And then if that if that doesn't get you anywhere, I'd go to the attorney second. Okay. All right. I'm a I'm a. Um... So I know you still hold the meetings too. So when, uh, how can I, like, do you still hold them the same time and everything? So I do I my trainings yep, every day at one and four. Uh, I used to only do them at four o'clock, but not everybody can make four. So I do them at one o'clock and four o'clock PM Eastern time. All you got to do is email Angela. If you want to get in, she'll add you to the calendar. She can either email you when you want to join, uh, on a regular basis, or she can email you on the, she's got a list. She sends out every day automatic. So either way. Okay, is this still free? is this still um is is this is it a charge or is it still free for the training or what? The training is is 
not free. I mean, we charge a fee for it for our clients. Um, but I, you know, I, I can help you a couple of times. We'll figure it out. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I mean, it, you need to get paid. So yeah. that's, that's number one. Let's get you paid. First, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Angela, who, who is Angela? Is there, a, I don't know who she is. She's my assistant. That's we work somebody. together. So her email is the same as mine, except it's a Armstrong okay. like this. A A okay mom strong at in a uh, US okay I got you okay so right. I'll I'll be shooting her an email I'll be shooting her an email and uh, we'll just go from there you got it okay you got it let me know what else I can do oh okay John thanks a lot bro yeah let me know if he, if they don't pay and you got to contact Morgan and Morgan let me know how that goes as well give me some feedback on it all right okay then. All right, thanks. You got it. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.